Fuck. All right, let's we're rolling. Rolling. Planet B presents presents Cult and Culture Podcast. Welcome to episode thirty-eight of the Cult and Culture Podcast. I'm Justin Pearson. And I'm Luke Kinshaw. <laughs> Um, this episode's pretty rad. It went, um, mm. it, I mean, I knew it was going to be good, but it went really well. Um, we had uh, our longtime friend Nick Reinhardt on the podcast, who's, I think, mostly known for Terramelos, but um, he's currently now in Death Grips. He yeah. um, does a lot of stuff with um, sort of the the pinback realm of, of, um, of music. Um, I think there's, um, some collaborative things that he's been doing with some of those guys. Um, and his solo thing, uh, disheveled cuss, I get, or maybe, I don't know if it's called, I don't know if it's considered solo, but like his other mm-hmm. projects, um, disheveled cuss. Um, he's just an awesome guitar player, all around awesome person. Um, did pedals and effects with, yep. uh, Juan who was previously on one of our episodes. Um, yeah. So it was nice to have him. It's, totally part of the family and um the the conversation just went awesome yeah the flow of this podcast was so dope yeah and we um made that bet the like billion dollar bet somewhere in the podcast (laughs) so uh so yeah pay attention to that and then whoever wins the musical lottery um we're we're gonna hug Mm -hmm. each other up so um i don't know what else I think the podcast speaks for itself. It really does. Yeah. Um, it, it's cool because he's obviously insanely technically proficient in his instrument and writing music, but we get into the morals and ethics of stuff, which I think is also as important as people's talent. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say talent, for, at least for ourselves. Um, but I think the, um, yeah, always goes full circle to bands like Fugazi and stuff, but it's a it's a good, it's a really good conversation. I think- um, And Corey Feldman? I don't think we talk about Corey. <laughs> Corey's not in this episode. Uh, the last two, we talked some shit about that guy, but um, we could talk about Corey. But anyhow, let's um, let's dive into this, and um, we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm Nick Reinhardt. I'm a guitar player, and I play in a lot of bands. I played in a band for like 20 years called Terramelos. My new thing is Disheveled Cuss. I play in Pinback. Uh, I play in Death Grips. I play in a band called Portugal the Man. I do a bunch of stuff. I like to do like stunt guitar for uh, for different <laughs> yeah. bands and stuff and, <laughs> stunt. and make, make weird sounds. So I like playing guitar and that's about it. <laughs> you do a really good job at it. Okay, so is Terramelos still a band? Is Terramelo still a band? This is crazy because you're that's the first time that's actually someone's asked me that. Uh-huh. In the last time the band was active, I think was 2018. And oddly, there there's been zero activity and no one has asked me that literal question. Yeah. Well, the apocalypse happened. Right. And that's so true. There's and, that. Um uh wow. So how do I answer that? <laughs> well, in we made a record in San Diego. Uh, in 2016, uh, during the election, Oof, Trump got elected yeah. the night we were at Singing Serpent. Okay, making a record. Um, and then that came out in 2017. We did an album cycle and did some touring, and then that was the last time the band was active. And around that time, the bass player moved to Switzerland, uh-huh. Nate, and he had started a family there, and then. John Clardy, the drummer, gets cancer, moves to Prague, Czech Republic, beats cancer, goes away mostly. I don't exactly know how that works, but that goes away. Um, and now he's doing his thing, hanging out there. And then he's still I, there. Yeah, he's still there. And I then I him. start doing all this other, stuff. you know, stuff. I'm kind of making, um, you know, my plan B for my musical mm-hmm. career or whatever. So but that's and that's what happened so then there's been zero band activity since then 
but I don't know if that means it's not a band anymore <laughs> or what does that mean to you? Fuck, so I mean, so well, hearing that the cancer <laughs> thing is gnarly. And so you beat it like whatever. Don't even yeah. talk about it. It'll just come back, you know, not, not the cancer, the band will yeah. just be a band. Right. Like, right. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> well, um, everything seems to be need needed to be a definitive for some reason. Yeah. In the world. I don't know why. Uh, uh, Chris Prescott, the drummer, Pre- uh, pinback last night was like, Oh, do you think, Terramels will ever do anything again that's a different question will we ever do anything or is it a band no one has explicitly said oh, is it I a band oh I see what you're saying so I, and I'm just like that's a different question yeah. in my mind but what, the way I explained it to him was well okay hiatus Nate, see what is Fugazi hmm. I'm not trying to say yeah. I'm not comparing myself yeah. to that but what, how would is that a band still yeah I heard this rad thing and this might not work out um monetarily but like at some point Coachella was like trying to get them to play do you hear about this I it was like an insane amount of money right I mean the amount of money then was insane it might not be that much now because there's like all these asshole billionaires but but they were offered a lot of fucking money and and Ian was like the next time Fugazi plays it's gonna be for free in DC and I was like oh. dude <laughs> that was the fucking shit right there I just saw like a, a flyer this morning from whatever era that was like a three dollar Fugazi show. Yeah, like, that's crazy. Yeah. You saw Fugazi I'm a lot, sure. mm-hmm. a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like right on the edge where I can remember seeing them on handbills, but I was maybe like thirteen or something, and yeah. I was like, I, "How do I get to there?" Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, anyways, just to to wrap up the Terramelos thing, I think it wraps it up. I don't know. I got another question, Terramelos related, but we'll get there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I when. Nate had a couple kids. It was like, oh, okay, so now this we're in a band where someone has kids. Mm-hmm. We had always we obviously we'd grown up doing this, so I didn't know how that works. So I do remember there was like an email thread where it was like, okay, well, so if we tour, you know, maybe we could do like um, a West Coast run, you know, maybe like, mm-hmm. and then a little bit later we do the East Coast mm-hmm. run, and in my head I was like. I'm not really interested in doing that because the band is so like complex and to get it up and running, Uh, dude, I want like two weeks of practice. I have so much that I like weight to carry in that band. It takes me a long time to make it right in my Mm. own head. And so the idea of like, all right, well now there's like, you know, families and dads and stuff. So, Lots of bands do that. Yeah. Obviously, you can exist that way. But this band, to exist part-time, when I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. man, I put this is mm-hmm. my entire life. This band is everything I do. I don't know that it's, like, fair to this thing we created to just sort of, like, do it every once in a while or, like, part-time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm like, literally, and, and these, these guys live in Europe now. <laughs> yeah. So how would that, how does that physically mm-hmm. work? It's like, I literally need 10 days to practice. Like, but I want to mm-hmm. practice 10 times before we play one show. And you, your rehearsals will have to be with them. You can't just do it. Like, That's right. Yeah, it has yeah. to, you, like, Tara Mellis rehearsal was always, okay, we spend, you know, four days um, getting all the kinks out, playing individual songs, yeah. building a set, and then I want to play the set two times a day for one week, something like that. Uh, and like, get yeah. it airtight and solid. Yeah. And I just, it just logistically does not work mm-hmm. um, to do that part time, you know, yeah. especially with guys coming in from Europe, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then also like the way, not that this is obviously like a definitive factor, but like, you're not making any money, like doing five West coast shows and then mm-hmm. taking a, a month off and then doing the East coast or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we have to do six weeks to like recoup everything yeah. and then make a paycheck on the way home. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. So uh, I love that you just laid all that out. I mean, that's how I already know all that, but it's nice to hear someone say it. Yeah, and again, like I don't, I'm not. It's not about the money, but I'm not trying to do that at this age. Yeah, I mean, we. <laughs> yeah, d- I yeah. still, I do do that at this age where I come home. I've come home without money yeah. before, obviously, yeah. but I like to try to avoid that yeah, at sure. forty. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to come home with a little bit of money yeah. and not to say that we would do Terramelos little mini, you know, stints and be broke or something. But I'm like, Oh dude, this, like we need to respect this thing that we created more than just treating it as a part-time thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so in my head, it's like, well, maybe down the line when 
kids are older and I've gotten all my, you know, extra stuff out of my, you know, got that out of the way and John's better and blah, blah, blah. Maybe it will exist at yeah. some point. But for right now, I don't think about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I'm so happy for John's health. Um, he's such a sweetheart. And mm -hmm. um, I love the band. So the first time I had ever heard or seen you was the Locust played with you in Sacramento. So you remember that show? I do. Yeah. and But I have a question about that because I, I liked it and I remember thinking it was great. But I remember all these people like being very critical on you guys because you had – I was told you had a guitar player that just did backflips and didn't actually plug in. Right. Is that real? Because I was like, I don't fucking remember that. No. that So, okay, that was – that was – um safety second era right oh i don't know that, that yeah, yeah, yeah 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 because uh what what year does that record come out i don't know that either is that 2000 <laughs> okay wait. it's like 2004 or three or something okay so well i'm trying to, the, the reason i'm asking oh, is because Terramello started as a four piece with yes. a second guitar yes. player and i don't remember if what year that would have been if he was still playing in the band i feel like that was there was th definitely a four. P there, were there was. There yeah. was. A, there yeah. really. Yeah, and so everyone was like, "There's a, gar a guitar player that like <laughs> isn't plugged in. That's so lame." And I was like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" I was like, "I watched the set and I didn't realize that." So I was like, "Um, oh. no, okay." <laughs> well, the the story is when that band was just like ah, an yeah. explosion, and the guitar player Jeff Worms, uh, he. The, when we started the band, I was like, I was sort of from like this punk world and Jeff was in like hardcore, like thrash bands yeah. or something. Yeah. And so when we started playing it, as an instrumental band, it was just like flying all over the place. <laughs> we He was plugged in uh, <laughs> and no one literally back. No one has in Terra Metals has ever performed a backflip. That's what I was like. No, no. I was, was like, just, what show were you guys? No, at? I'll set it straight. Yeah. That was just the lore of it. Like, oh. But yeah, there it was explosive and like, smashing shit over and just being stupid yeah okay, you know what I mean? okay. like um that's but, so fucking but funny. yeah so um but i i really so there were four people he, yeah there was and, a second guitar player at that yeah time. it was at the boardwalk the boardwalk in uh -huh. orangeville yeah orange okay because that stuck with me for a while i was like dude i don't know and i've always wanted to ask you but i've never no thought about yeah it, no know? but but there are like i don't know if you were to like youtube terramelos or something like you know uh there will be old clips that come up of us being you know idiot 23 year olds and like i mean it's not a backflip it was i do remember like doing somersaults you did it <laughs> i mean oh, i do remember doing a backward <laughs> somersault and you know and jeff like you know like i have a, a photo of him just like smashed up upside down up against his amp with it pushed over or oh, something yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but in like 2004 Someone probably used the word backflip. Yeah. And I mean, I, that wasn't a sanctioned term. Uh -huh. I wasn't trying to tell people we do backflips. <laughs> I immediately but... went to like HR doing a backflip and I'm like, who the fuck <laughs> is in that band yeah, doing a no, backflip? No, 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 no. <laughs> like uh, for, for the record, no one has ever done a backflip. And always started out plugged in. No one was ever not plugged yeah. in in that band. Uh, but so there... it was just shit talking. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shit talking. No, there's, um, but. Yeah. Also, we're just like dorky kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like trying to figure out what our identity was. And that didn't even happen, I would say, until <coughs> maybe four years, four or five years in the band or something. I remember um, we played the, one of the most like I'll get I'll give um, what's the name of this podcast? Cult and Culture. culture. <laughs> I'm going to give the cult and I'm going to give Colton culture an exclusive right now. Um, I remember in the early days, probably in 2004, 2005, we played up in Nevada city. Uh, you ever been in Nevada city? Uh, yes. Grass Valley, Nevada city. Yeah. Uh, I guess East of Sacramento, like where we kind of grew up. Yeah. But like this little magical town, uh, where some of the hello guys were from. Okay. And, uh, but to us, it's still Sacramento. Yeah. 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 To them, it's, it's not. not. Okay. And me, it's not. Yeah. But yeah, let's say Sacramento-ish, but like a little forest outside uh -huh. Sacramento. And we are playing uh, this bar. I think it was Cooper's. And um, Spencer from Hello was there. And we were like, oh, whoa, Spencer's here. Crazy. Because we were big, big Hella nerds. And like we opened our set. Um, playing like 30 seconds of a hella song uh, playing in quotes because no one else can really play hella songs like hella plays hella <laughs> songs and 
And then, so I did this little intro thing and then like zapped into the chaotic, whatever song we played at the time. And we thought that was really funny. Uh But now I'm like, that is the cringiest, stupidest thing ever. And like I had even heard since, because I'm friends with all those guys now. And they were like, yeah, that was weird when you guys did that. Like, no shit, dude. That's terrible. Why did we think (laughs) that would be a good idea to do that? So, um, but anyways, yeah. So that's the early Terramelos era. And like, yeah, just again, just being dumb kids and not really knowing like, what we wanted to do and just seeing all these cool bands, your band, uh, basically the ones that like were really, really big deals to us at the time was like, you know, in my mind, it's like Fugazi, Dillinger, Locust, and Hella were yeah. the ones where we're like, oh, okay, we should kind of do cool stuff mm. uh, somehow. Thanks too. for including you know? us. In yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. And so I do remember that um, one of the, well, the first like locust <clears throat> memories I have was like when we walked into the boardwalk, you guys were sound checking and it was like, whoa, they don't have their masks on. <laughs> cool. <laughs> this is weird, you know? Uh-huh. So, yeah. But, yeah, dorky kids, you know? The 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 cover the covering thing's funny because when the locust did a tour with um, <laughs> Lightning Bolt and Airborne Radar, the Oops tour, mm-hmm. and um, there was all this, like, I thought there was, like, camaraderie about everybody because it was, like, two, like, Hello was on that tour and stuff. You said Flying Lutenbachers, right? Uh, Flying Lutenbachers, well, they were on part of it, too. Yeah. Like, it was, like, it was the locust, Lightning Bolt, Airborne Radar, the whole tour, and then two regional bands got it and, but um but there was all this like tension between airborne radar and lightning bolt and um and lightning bolt kept covering a airborne radar song and like <laughs> pissing them off and it was meant to fucking piss them wow. off you know so it's crazy because i remember we were in like boise or somewhere not that um we were in boise and uh i remember being on the alley and there was no green room and i remember the 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 airborne radar song whatever it was was it stopped the door flies open eric paul comes out the door closes and the same song starts again and i was like oh weird (laughs) they're playing without you and he goes that's not us and i was like oh because lightning bolt was set up on the floor and so they would just rip into this song and like there was like so much weird tension and i was like oh that's such a trip um because i thought it'd be really cool if Lightning Bolt was playing a Locust song, we would be really flattered, you <laughs> right. know, like kind of like how you thought, like we're doing this because right. we like these other bands. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. And Eric's like, no, it's not. And I was like, oh, weird. It's not. Uh, and then and then um, so we tried. So we were going to do like I think we were going to do like a uh, start covering people's songs, too. But we were waiting until someone fucked with us. We're like, right. all right, as soon as it's Airborne Radar or Lightning Bolt that covers one of our songs, we're going to fuck them up. And no one ever did. And I, maybe because it was too weird or they didn't have enough effects or something or, right um but that's a strange uh perception i've heard a lot about that uh, oops tour era from jonathan hishke oh yeah he's a good buddy who was doing lutenbachers at the time yep. i think right yeah he was in he was on that tour yeah do you remember what year that was that's er- that's early 2000s right i didn't see that tour that was like before plague soundscapes came out okay so that's yeah. maybe 2000 2001 One, maybe yeah yeah um, do you, I have a, being a little younger than you guys, I have like a pretty specific perception of that era, which is like, I guess this is how I square it all up in my head too. The early to mid two thousands, there was this explosion of like technical, weird, fast, aggressive music <clears throat> that which is sort of like what made us want to, you know, leave our little punk zone and start a weird technical fast band, Terra Mellos. But do you acknowledge that from that time period of like, whoa, this is happening. People like this stuff. Like these shows are big, you know? Hmm. Yeah. But I don't know if people, I, hmm, that's like really interesting. Cause we were kind of like doing it against like hardcore. Cause we were like, you know, like, you know, we're like, fuck that. And it was like all macho and shit. And we're like, let's just do weird. And we kind of like went that route. Right. But we were also coming from San Diego. We had all these influences. You know, we were like into crossed out and like strange, um, super brutal, weird shit in it. So it kind of made more sense. Or like, I mean, if you think about like San Diego stuff, it's like, a good example would be like Crossed Out and Tit Wrench. And if anybody's listening to this or if you know those bands, it's like brutal what is known as power violence and tit wrench is like samples and like mm-hmm. weird, like sort of what you would assume the locust, it got like pedal ish for stuff from, you know, right. so like weirdo shit. And so we were just kind of like, fuck you guys. And that was it. Well, 
and that's rad because you're like we're just doing what this is what we want to do but from my perspective and i think you know people we're only seven eight years difference uh -huh. and now that means nothing uh -huh. but yeah. 20 years ago <laughs> that was lot. big yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean so i think from like all the youngsters <laughs> that were going to those shows it was so special and like cool and like oh my god and there's a lot of people that are going to these from what i remember i mean i followed you know i was from sacramento and i remember maybe going to like four or five of the locust dillinger shows mm. whatever year that mm -hmm. was um but i just think for like technical music um that was a really that was the time mm. that it was all really like boiling over and in my head you know it was like okay i want to do this and i guess the way i look back on like whatever my quote unquote career as a musician is like i put all my eggs in that basket cuz i'm mm -hmm. like whoa all these guys are doing this this is going it's going to go yeah and then like <laughs> by 2008 it had really like cooled off yeah. i feel like that's what in my head that's the time that i um i guess i kind of cap it off at yeah you know, like maybe locust stopped playing like around that time mm. maybe yeah something like that yeah. and you know like whatever like, it just always it, it never like got easier it just stayed like kind of like that's, this is yeah hard and and maybe in my naive head i was like ooh this weird thing is going to get easier and yeah. bigger uh -huh. you know like we're going to be rock stars because I mean, that's what brett thought with anti you know like with right. that si signing us anti he was like it's going to be the next he said we were going to be like the next devo okay so weren't. exact yes yeah. okay so brett was on that same tip too so i'm not that crazy for like ooh this is going to be a thing but but we never did it like, we want to be big. Of we course, were just like, we just course. want to do this thing. You were just see, cruising. Not to say that I wanted to be big. I didn't want to be big. I just thought it possible. Uh -huh. Because seeing growing up, seeing these shows, like, oh, wow, this is getting bigger. This is happening. Cool, let's let's all go. Yeah. And then, yeah, not, not that it just like, it didn't even burn out. It just sort of like <laughs> slowed down yeah. and it was on to the next thing, which whatever that was and by 2010, you yeah. know. And obviously we we all kept going yeah. with mm -hmm. doing this kind of stuff. We didn't have a, you know, choice. <laughs> we didn't have a choice. I didn't yeah, have a choice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and like eventually, like, like I said, I put all my eggs in this one kind of very tiny specific basket yeah. and I didn't think to like start branching out doing different things for a long time because I'm like, no, no, no. It's it, it can go, yeah. it can go, you know, and then mm. back to, you know, like whatever happens within the band mm. and then what's happening in the world, you know, it just doesn't work out the way that I thought it would work out. But, you know, what's an interesting point, though, like uh, the pre-internet was like and you brought this up, like how you were younger and, and you would go see these weird bands for the Locust. We were we had never played a, an age restricted show. I mean, we played one that was 18 and up because we had to, and we you know, like so it was very um, inclusive to everybody and we wanted there to be 12 year olds and mm. 75 year olds we wanted everybody to come and i think like that got missed a little bit later uh with a lot of bands you know for for the younger generation yeah that's funny i remember that maybe reading that in a, like a interview or something when i was like you know 19 or whatever that you guys you guys didn't do live nation shows no was that, that was another was? live nation but yeah. also age restricted but right. it, so the thing is like when the locust was like you know uh, signed to Epitaph and I was like you sold out we were still broke and we still didn't make money but but we were do we did like two big tours the Dillinger one and then this Yaya Yaz one and it was funny because and this is no disrespect to either of those bands because I really love both of those bands so much but they come from the, the industry standards of like doing things practical and like we're here to make money the Locust is like well, we're not doing Live Nation we're not doing age restricted shows and like fuck most of this shit and so the the, the promote the, the agents were like well what do you think how are we going to book a tour mm -hmm. and so we're like yeah but we don't do those right and so they had to accommodate same with phantom Oz, same same thing and so it's funny because um you know like <laughs> I mean, Patton jokingly was like we don't have morals you know and i was like i mean because you know he's like we'll pl do whatever and i think like and you know even like ben <laughs> wyman has said like they just wanted to play like all of the massive they wanted to do everything and i was like that's cool but we don't want to do everything and i think that like maybe um that goes back to like the Fugazi thing that we were talking about. Of course, you know? it always like, goes back to Fugazi. <laughs> Do you think that, um, like, we're a little older now? Does it still go back to Fugazi for you, or do you like? Are you like, it can't always go back to Fugazi? I think that um, I struggle with that. Okay, because I'm like, I want it to, but also, 
But Man, it, I don't know. Well, I'm, it's also your privilege to be able to be like, mm-hmm. oh, no, I won't play Coachella, Coachella for a million dollars. It's like, you want to fucking pay me a million dollars? I'll do whatever. I'll eat dog shit for a fucking million dollars. You know, like, dude, let's. OK, I remember um, I, I had a million dollars and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember um, I'm, I'm going to get this context wrong, but there was um, Greg Sonier from Deerhoof, the drummer from Deerhoof, one of my <clears throat> favorite all time drummers. Oh, I know he had maybe mentioned um something about how Deerhoof had gotten offered like a lot of money to have a song in a commercial and they turned it down yeah i'm like whoa crazy yeah. respect i would have a song in a mcdonald's commercial straight up yeah i'm just telling you yeah. I, like if I, if mcdonald's wanted to pay me to have a song in a commercial i could be okay with that yeah. a lot of money i'm talking yeah. a lot of money yeah. yeah not that i'd ever be in a position to have a song in a fucking mcdonald's commercial yeah. but i'm just saying that's the struggle i want to get head. to that but we'll talk about that, that okay. that's where in my head i'm like damn like well my because you've never had the carrot dangled yet right right no i haven't mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but i want the carrot dangled in front of my head <laughs> you know i'm like dude come on like that would be whatever but that i guess that's what i'm just saying like you just i think on that a lot like damn it does it should always go back to fugazi but like at this age and at this point in my career, I can't say for certain that it would always yeah. go back there. You there, know, you know mm-hmm. like an, another like adjacent Fugazi ish band is like early Chumbawamba. So they were like, you know, these anarchists and they were very progressive. And then all of a sudden they like um, became huge with the song or whatever. But there, I, I, that's, and that's fine, whatever. But I remember like reading an interview because they were like all vegan and shit before like people were really into that. And then I remember them talking about how they were touring in a country and I wish I knew the I, I wish I knew all the, 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 the story here, but they were touring in this country and they were with um people of of whatever the um that culture like they're they're like they were having a proper meal from that place and and it and they it had like meat or dairy or something and they 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 realized like we can't not accept this meal. Like they were playing in a country where people don't fucking get to play. <laughs> right. You know, and so they're like we have to just um compromise this like sort of I think they were being vegan for political reasons. So they're mm-hmm. like, we have to compromise this because this is a part of the cultural thing. They're offering us this thing. This is a big deal. And they, they like made that compromise, which is sounds weird. Like coming, like tr- translating like vegan something to like millions of dollars for Coachella or McDonald's or something. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? No, like, I, I get it. They yeah, like, yeah. But, but the fact is that they like considered it all. I thought was cool. So like if someone was to say like, here's the carrot for the McDonald's commercial, you're going to be like, like you're not in the position to turn it down because you aren't already like um, a millionaire, you know? Mm. So, so you're going to say like, you know what? I'm going to fucking do that. And I'm going to go rip even like gnarlier af- with the money from that. Absolutely. Well, of course, that's the thing. Like there's yeah. a, a net positive for the, the world for me to just have a song in a McDonald's commercial because my do the math all of a sudden, you know, it's a domino effect of like positivity and think, well, hopefully in yeah. that case, you know, yeah. like, oh, more art is created and I do and I feel better about my own life. And now I'm a happy person because I don't have to struggle with rent and blah, blah. You know, there's mm-hmm. a zillion yeah, things yeah, yeah. that come from that. So I'm not not to say I don't understand like the conflict. Like, dude, why would you want a fucking song in a McDonald's commercial? But the yeah. conflict is going to be from your fans saying, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you could keep zooming out. And obviously there are like moral and, you know, ethical Question. But if it's not your song, they're gonna pick some other weirdos. That's song, right, you know? exactly. You know, we- weirdo like cool, but yeah. you know what I'm saying they're gonna be like, oh well, let's just get the whatever song that's like similar. It Ooh, and then yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. If it's not you're yours. Like, it's, it's not mine. It's someone else. Yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. I've had friends in like getting some shit, and I'm like, fuck, that's weird. But if it wasn't them, it would have been the next one. It's funny because then like even like being stuck stuck on the Fugazi thing, I'm like, man, like who. Okay, because to all of us, we're like, oh, Fugazi are real ones. And, like, how many real ones truly are there? But I'm like, I wonder even how, like, when you're not talking publicly or, like, in your own head, you know, like, have you ever been to the Discord house? Yeah. And you did, and you hung out with Ian, and he showed you around, did yep. the whole thing. Like, you get a different perspective on things. We did that on the the last Terramellos tour. Like, you know, John had been in contact with Ian, and we stopped by and, like, hung out. And, like... Being around him and hearing him speak about stuff, it's like, oh, interesting. This is a little different than what I had built this real mm-hmm. one up to be in my head. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, even about, like, oh, I think I asked him, 
if if you don't know, like you can go to the Discord house and well, I'm, this isn't an invitation to go to the Discord <laughs> house, but like you know, if you know, if you have an in or whatever, yeah. Ian seems happy to like hang so out. Are you, he's, yeah, yeah. he's not trying to. Um, as a side note, I feel like old heads are down to talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I think something about me is like uh, growing up this little like nervous little kid. I didn't want to ask questions or like disturb things. Matter of fact, I never, I saw Zach Hill play in 2000. I never said one word to him until 2007. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I don't, I don't want to disturb him. I just be cool. Be cool. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But then like, I feel like people like talking about stuff. So, um, uh, you know, like when we're hanging out with Ian, I'm like, I'm going to ask him questions that yeah. I want to know. And he's like, he was totally stoked to talk about yeah, it yeah. and answer stuff. Or, you know, like I'm buddies with Eric Avery from Jane's addiction. And it's like, Hey dude, what about this? Or what about this show? And they're like, they're so stoked to talk about stuff. But you there's two I mean? things. There's like, there's like you, the cool dude that plays in cool bands asking thoughtful questions. Or mm -hmm. there's just like some rando kind of fuckhead. That's saying true. That shit. Like we're, Rando fuckheads aside, you know, if you keep it cool, I feel like uh, people want to mm -hmm. talk about their stuff, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But I specifically remember asking Ian, like, oh, like, so the $5 show thing or, like, shows under $5, like, you know, talk about that or whatever. And he's like, huh, we just thought that was funny. We thought it'd just be, like, annoying to just be like, no, no, like, to the promoters. No, it has to be under $5. Yeah. And he's just, like, giggling about yeah. it, you know. And <laughs> obviously, I'm sure there was – you know, like a bigger conversation back in the day about that. But also nobody is able, like not everyone's able to be like, this is what we want. Cause most promoters will be like, well, go fuck yourself. You're not going on tour. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I just liked hearing that, like him just sort of being like, you know, laughing about it. Like, Oh, we, he literally said, we just thought that was funny. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Right on yeah. dude. You know, like it wasn't necessarily this like, no, it's so important because yeah, you the, thought youth, it was so deaf the youth can't afford this mm -hmm. and we need to make it all accessible for everyone and da, 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 like this big philosophy behind it. I'm sure there was, I'm not discounting yeah. the fact that there wasn't, but I like the fact that he just like, we thought it was funny. I mean, yeah. I guess it makes sense. Like not to compare the locust to Fugazi, but when we were like, no, you know, age restricted shows or no clear channel. I mean, people were like, they, we did think it was kind of funny, you know, yeah, like it was, yeah. but, but like, yeah. like the, funny that it was like a hassle for like these, like, promoter exactly people that didn't give a shit about art in the yes. first place we're like yeah. that's cool let's just fuck with them um because we weren't gonna we the reason with the with the clear channel thing was because they were like evicted they were like ejecting um vi um artists from venues if mm -hmm. you were speaking out against the war and the gulf the gulf war was like the iraq war and so they're like right. um kicking out like i don't know whoever like fucking dixie chicks or something you know like uh. they were like getting thrown out of the of the of venues for like um being outspoken cool, about the cool. war yeah. and well and you know even like kind of piecing it together now well that's cool because i knew that that was the thing that your band you know that was you know the vibe of the band no uh, -uh no we're not doing yeah. this and the fact that like i knew about that from being a fan or reading about it or something that gave awareness to me about it mm -hmm. like oh well that that probably would have been how i learned about like the, what the difference between let's say a clear channel live nation show was or going to a local show like i had yeah. never even done the math yeah. to figure out yeah. what the difference would be i mean be. the diy thing was a big deal of course and still is yeah but um, but even let's say the difference between the boardwalk show uh -huh. mm. that we played you know which is maybe a 400 capacity room or something versus a bigger thing or or whatever i just had never even thought about what the difference would be between because there's all clear channel shows are not just like smashing pumpkins in arenas or uh -huh. whatever they're like mid there could be mid yeah. mid size shows or whatever so i'm just saying it it brought attention to that idea to me like oh wait corporate yeah. bullshit yeah. versus like you know or even just researching a show and knowing mm -hmm. whether or not it's a local promoter or i mean it, it did affect us monetarily of course for sure yeah. right and we yeah. even like had like we were supposed to do a tour with skinny puppy and then their agent was just like oh fuck this it's not gonna work you know, so that because you guys would have been, let's say you see an, a tour itinerary and like, no, hey, we can't do this one. Can't do this. Yeah, one. And they were like, there's no way this is going to work. Right. Like, well, we're not going to. It was either it was either they have to get, uh, you know, have their tour rearranged or we have to compromise. And like, no mm -hmm. one's going to do either because because their agents like well, we want the money and we're like, well, we're not fucking compromising. And so then the tour just doesn't happen. Looking back on that, do you 
do you stand by that like hardlined no can't compromise or are you like well clear channel's not clear channel anymore and i've played live nation shows right it's Mm -hmm. it's not the same fight but i mean if a moral issue was to be presented it would still be a moral issue but let's say like the fucking mcdonald's commercials a great thing like if someone's like hey locust like Locust isn't a band anymore. Like, dude, I'll be like, you guys, if they're going to give us a million dollars, I don't know. I mean, I haven't had that conversation <laughs> with the rest of the Locust, but it is a legitimate question. You it's know? it's at least a legitimate yeah. question. There's also uh, like, yeah. to, to me, and I mean, I'm not going to speak for Joey and Bobby, but like um, having a Locust song in a McDonald's co- commercial could just be fully, <laughs> see, super <laughs> ironic. The funniest like, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, could you imagine just like... <laughs> You know, like, uh, the, here's your burger, yeah. <laughs> or whatever, or chicken nugget. Yeah, um, I mean, th- I yeah, that's a whole other level. Okay, of like, 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 but then, like, then you take a step down. Like, what if it's in a oh, Tesla? Okay, I'm, we're probably gonna be like, no. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's See, has something to do with like Bezos or fucking Musk, like, fuck those people. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, but also like, if because now if we're talking a Tesla commercial, we, you might even be talking more money yeah. than a McDonald's commercial. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. It, these are just the things. Basically, the the point of this is like, we think about this yeah. stuff having come from, you know. Nothing. Nothing. And like growing up doing this a certain way, you know, like you just get older and wiser and you keep zooming out about things. And you're like, well, wait a second. That's kind of the point. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Yeah. I wouldn't. Automat- that's not an automatic no. Let me think about this. But I think you know? I wonder about this, like Tesla saying, like, here's a million bucks for your song. You're going to get a million bucks and you can do all this rad shit. Is it going to sell more Teslas? Absolutely not. Like, they're going to still sell the same amount of Teslas. It's not like you're helping them sell their shit. Right. People aren't going to buy more burgers at McDonald's because there's a Terramello song in it. They're going to just be like, you got paid and... Your fans are going to be like, oh, shit, I'm going to McDonald's now. Right. Like, I'm no, going to buy yeah. stock in the company. Like, yeah. No one's going to do that. Well, that Or, yeah, I'm going to start eating meat. What? Yeah, whatever, yeah. It, is, whatever it is. Like, yeah, it kind of almost means nothing. <laughs> so then that makes me even right now be like, yeah, then what? Well, what are they even accomplish? I mean, they need music. They need a fucking mm-hmm. thing. Be- because what the, the-, the Clear Channel thing was like, oh, you're anti-war. I mean, sorry, you're pro-war, you're, you're, you're anti, you know, whatever, like, the fuck we were standing for. Like, we were against the war in Iraq. We were against the George W. Bush administration. And, and like, us going and bringing all these people to these venues is making Live Nation money. Like, maybe it's, mm-hmm. it's not substantial, but, like, every night the, the show is well attended and all the people came and they, they spent all their money. Your song being in a commercial is probably... Or our song, whatever. I'm not saying yours, but like yeah. a cool song and a commercial is probably not going to sell more cars. Yeah. Also, there will be like, I mean, I've like, uh, you know, there's a moving unit song that 31G put out, and it was we put out the vinyl, but the the song got into a car <laughs> commercial. If it sounded cool, it's a good good groove, is rad. They got paid. They've got paid a lot of money. I'm, I'm sure. pretty sure they did. Yeah. Um, uh. It could have been any. I mean, I like moving. I like the. You know, what I'm saying it could have been another. Yeah, it could have been another. Sure. Like it could have been the Rapture, and people would in the real world would have been like, "Is that moving you to the Rapture?" They would just been like, "I'm buying that car, or I'm not buying that car." I think I. I'm just more thoughtful about these types of scenarios yeah. at this point. I think we, that's the point. Or even just like down to let's just say, zoom out even further yeah. using Amazon Prime or whatever, yeah. because that is a, could be a problem yeah. depending on how you're you're looking mm-hmm. at this because that basically is a car song or a, a song in a Bezos commercial or something. Yeah. It, it's not yeah. literally, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You're still contributing to this thing. And I'm just saying uh, instead of just like a hard line, no, I, I think on it. I'm thoughtful about yeah. this type yeah. of stuff. Instead of being like, no, fuck Amazon. I'm not using that. I'm like, well, wait a second. Let mm-hmm. me just think on this and like, you know, do some, I, like math in my head about like well the pros and cons of this and I just try to apply that to a lot of things. As long, I mean, I think point. that one thing is if you're just a smarter, um, knowledgeable person and you're even just even like contemplating it in your head, then you're then that's the real that's the real point. Whatever your decision is, the fact that you even thought about it because most people are like fuck it, I don't. It's like not even good, doesn't even get processed. They're just like blah. Totally. Thing, whatever. I agree. The, you're right. That if you can just be a human that, you know, gives thought to these types of things, yeah. that's, you've already kind of like, you're 
way ahead of everyone so else. So in my head, I'm already thinking like one step ahead. Like, okay, if <laughs> if the locust was like, hey, you know, here's a shitload of money to do this Tesla fucking commercial. Maybe maybe we could be like, you know what? Let's do that. We'll all be able to like, you know, pay our rent or whatever the fuck it is, buy a new car that's not a Tesla. But we'll be able to do the thing. But like, let's say like, in, in order to like appease our fan base and like, uh, um, some kind of like moral well-being we could be like well, we're taking a portion of this and we're going to do this thing we're going to do this sort of like sort of like a protest move i guess maybe that's something and then be public about it you totally know? again going back to like well let's just we're just using this you know theory of a, a million dollars yeah. you know to like you know, use let's a do song. a billion because a million's like nothing. What huh. billion for a that, song? Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's funny. It's like I know a million is nothing. Obviously, a million is a lot yeah. to to mm -hmm. us. You, you could buy a one bedroom house in San Diego now with a million bucks. The reason I'm using a million <laughs> is because like my life is just. We were talking earlier about using fucking tape. You know, like mm -hmm. duct. We're still, yeah. you know, grown men duct taping <laughs> shit back yeah. together or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I if you grow up living that life that's in our like dna now, oh, yeah you know mm -hmm. but i'm like you know my my world is so like low overhead and i live a pretty simple life and like a million dollars changes my life yes drastically yeah. and again this is a net positive yeah. into the world because even let's just say taking that and doing something a portion of this insane amount of money that you can never even imagine yeah. like and doing something really special and important with that and then like you know <sighs> what you end up doing just as an artist and what you put back into the world, money does change that. It yeah. makes it a lot easier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but even having said that, it's like, well, I'd, I'm also at peace is a whole other thing but with like not having a lot of money. Yeah. I, I can exist <laughs> perfectly fine. And I realized that maybe in like the last five or six years of like, Oh wait, this is like kind of corny, but it's like, Oh, it is about the journey. You know what I mean? I'm uh -huh. like, I didn't really, it never happened for me. I never like got rich or like got in a famous rock band. Like yeah. maybe I thought I was yeah. when I was 13 or 14 uh -huh. or whatever, but I'm like, no, this is actually pretty cool. I'm happy with this. I can afford my rent and I have a dog and yeah. you know, like things are cool, <laughs> yeah. but a lot of money would change that yeah. and make this a lot better. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't want to forget about this, but you you were mentioning before we started and you said it a few minutes ago too like that you caught heat for quote unquote selling out on the locust anti thing oh yeah that's so crazy to me because what i was telling you earlier is like I, well for the listeners the anti is a subsidiary of epitaph and is it is the mm -hmm. same record label run out of the same office mm -hmm. i mean it's the same yeah. record label um I just know that we all thought that was the coolest thing. Never in my head did that like come off as any sort of corny sellout thing. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. do, do, do. Like yeah. no way. We thought that was really, really cool. I mean, we did too, but it took a minute to get to that point. But right away people were like, you're going to write a pop punk record. And we're like, you're going to go fuck <laughs> yourself, you know? Well, and like, yeah. And then that record is like the gnarliest, craziest one of my favorites you know? i mean but no one knows the you know like mm -hmm. in our heads we were like going to the meetings and we were like well no we just want to ask you brett we want to make this the most fucked up thing we can possibly do are you okay with that absolutely are you sure here's our here's if it was this fucked up like i don't even want to say what the shit we were <laughs> mm -hmm. saying because it was like really <laughs> fucked up and he's like whatever you want and we're like this seems like a perfect label yeah there's yeah. no there's no like whatever a perception would have been of like those guys are doing this now blah 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 yeah no way that yeah. that was a cool move but th that was a weird time because there was like there was this um s there was weird um, major label things happening with a lot of bands right and so we're like uh, anti or epitaph is like just underneath that it's an independent label it might as well be major let's pick that over warner brothers or fucking whatever you know i guess that is true i mean even though it it's not a major label, but it has all the fixes. Sure. Of, I mm -hmm. mean, signing to Anti is one thing. Signing to if we signed to like Warner, like we're not going to have a choice if our song is going to be in a car commercial. They're right. going to put That's it in true. there, and you're going to have to just live with it. <laughs> that would have been the most psychotic thing ever for the Locust to actually sign to a a real major label. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that was a time where people were like talking about stuff like that. Well, I guess also going back to that era was when whoa, this is going to be big. This is happening. Mm -hmm. Weird. Yeah technical non-regular music was a thing yeah you know <laughs> yeah 
Um, let me let me just pivot here because so I saw you play Disheveled Cuss with um, what was that with Pinback? Abelia. Abelia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I was like, first time I saw you that band play live that project, and I was like fascinated with how. I mean, obviously, like we're friends, and and I and we're both into like nerdy uh, technical stuff. So I'm just like fixated on like your your what you. I mean, I enjoy the music, but uh, but I don't like. I'm not the kind of guy that goes to show and moshes or whatever. I'm sure. like, I'm gonna just watch and see what happens and like get the something else than like a normal person. So I'm like sh- watching, and I'm like, this is fucking fascinating. All this weird shit you were doing, like with sampling through loops and stuff. And then I'm thinking like, how has this motherfucker like done all this weird shit and like. It is like, um, man, like you, you have found this, um, sort of like sweet spot between like weirdo shit and like, um, you know, um, creative music. I don't want to say like pop music. You can't say that. You can say that. But like, it's not like, it's not like abrasive, like Terramellos. It's like, um, yeah, you can kind of like go like, oh, this, like this could be in a fucking car commercial and also like at some weirdo thing Mac i think thing. that's i think that checks out in my okay. head uh when in when terra Mellos kind of started slowing down and I, we were like okay this is this this might not be a thing for a while but like i said then i'm like okay fuck. Oh, slowing oh. down as far as like activity not yeah, musically yeah okay. yeah yeah activity mm-hmm. wise i was like okay i got like kind of scared like oh no i i this is what my life is. I I'm, Uh. I don't have a plan B Mm -hmm. I'm like doing this. And again, I had just, everything was all in on that band. So I was like, Oh God, I got to do something else. I got to do something else. It's time. And so it's like, all right, I'll try, you know, a quote unquote solo record that I called disheveled cuss. And I made a record that was just like, um, not technical, not weird, Mm -hmm. fuzzy guitars. That is going back to, pre-discovering uh let's say um like pre 18 years old so i'm talking like teenager from like 12 to 17 where i'm like into just like nirvana Uh, and you know like like really going back to like just being into rock music and what i love now which is like you know rock and pop and the beach boys and uh, the pixies like my actual favorite stuff that i continue to listen to not necessarily like grindy technical shit all the time or whatever so anyways that was sort of the impetus of disheveled cuss like i just want to make fun songs because i've been writing mm -hmm. in in the meantime of all that era of playing and Terra Mellos and being into weird stuff, I was still like at home writing just normal songs. Yeah. Quote, but, unquote, but normal, normal songs. songs through your fi- brain filtered through or like Nirvana or That's whatever. Right. It's still going to be like, That's Oh, right. there's some shit. And, there. and the first disheveled cuss record does have that. Yeah. It's like, Oh, this is, it gets filtered through my <laughs> per- person. Jacked up like way of doing things. exactly. So yeah. it turns into something, you know, Unique. a little different. Yeah. And, and so that was the idea of that. Um, well, you fucking nailed it. I'll say that. Thank you. Thank you. And then, so I did, I, the first record was like sort of like a fuzzy, you know, pop rock songs, maybe like, um, yeah, like in the, the Pixies world or something. And then during COVID I made, I did like the weirdest, most psychotic thing I could ever do. And I made an acoustic record which I'm like, what? How would I do that? Like, you know, in the vein of like, you know, I don't know, like Elliot Smith or something. And I wrote all these songs on acoustic guitars. And then I had a bunch of like jazz musicians kind of like fill it out for me. So it kind of created this other weird thing. And like in my head, that was the riskiest, most daring uh-huh. thing I'd done in forever because I'm not comfortable doing that, you know, but I thought it turned out just as I wanted it to. Um, but even that didn't turn out Elliot Smith. It turned out like, in your, in I your think lane. So. I think so, yeah. yeah. In, in my lane. That's a good way to put it. Like, I, I feel like no matter what, like, I'm still in my lane, uh-huh. but I'm just kind of bringing more stuff into it, you know? But I'm glad that the disheveled cuss thing comes off that way because I still, you know, um, it's writing stuff like that that is not freaked out shit like Tara Mellis or whatever. It's just natural to me. But again, yeah, it all goes through that filter or whatever. And then it comes out the certain way. So even like we were literally tonight, I don't know when this will come out, but tonight I'm playing oh, disheveled cusses opening for Pinback at the Casbah 35th anniversary. And like when we were practicing the other day, it's hard um, being this age. I'm like starting a new band. 
it's difficult. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we don't get to, like, practice four or five times a week mm -hmm. and really, really do this. It's more yeah. like, oh, fuck, who's around? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we'll be able to practice one time before this show, right? Whereas, like, it's not like it was back yeah. in the day, and I really miss that. Yeah. Like I was saying, the practice schedule. I want to practice a lot and make this a really special mm -hmm. thing. Like, uh, you know, like, no, 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 no stick clicks in. Oh, if yeah, we yeah, practice yeah, this yeah, enough, yeah. like, in fact, uh, Rob was, like, joking. He's like, I was, like, um, I was talking about when we were at practice, like, well, I can just, I can just do, like, one stick click in, you know, like, scrape one, this, yeah. mm -hmm. click, da -na -na, yeah. or whatever. And he's like, how would you do that? You need two. And I was like, what? You don't need two. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. He's like, you need at least two to establish uh, the thing. I was like, no, no, no. You don't need that. Yeah. You could do it. And I was like, fuck one. We That's don't need nice. any. Yeah. We do this enough mm -hmm. times. We don't need any. Mm -hmm. And like, but that requires practice mm -hmm. and like the building, the language yeah, of a yeah, band. Yeah. And that you can't do that now yeah. because everyone has lives and jobs and doing stuff. And so when we were practicing for this show, we practiced once. I was like, I just want to try and make this like this set a little more magical and like thoughtful mm. with transitions uh. or going into it. And that's what made Terramello so cool. It was like all that time we really put in a lot of thought to like presenting mm -hmm. the music in a live thing as opposed to like click, click, click. Here's yeah. a song and da, 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 click into another song. No, no, I want this to be a presentation mm -hmm. of something that's yeah. a little more special. And I think what you're referencing, huh. like seeing the samples and stuff. Like I, I consider that yeah. stuff, even when putting together these kind of like semi weird rock, pop rock songs, yeah. I still want it to have that, you know, piece of magic, yeah. to it, you know? And I just, I miss that about like when we were kids being like, cool, let's practice five times this week and mm -hmm. hang out and do stuff. And I don't know in my world, it's a little harder to sure. make that happen. Yeah, the you know? the the clicking thing is really interesting because I remember my friend Sarah saw us play and she was like, not kind of from the world of she doesn't play music and stuff, but she was like, this is like <clears throat> when we toured with the Lo or the Locust toured with Phantomas, and she was like, I don't know how you did it. Like, how does Gabe know when to come in? And I was like, oh. Uh, she's like, uh, she's like, were you counting? Was Gabe counting? And I was like, Don't, you know, but we had our ways to figure it out, you know, totally. Um, but like, I love the fact that people that was like, it wasn't like, oh, that song had the greatest groove or that was the coolest lyric. It was just like, what the fuck? How did you do that? And Absolutely. That, that was really cool. That that was such a cool thing about that band. The silence in between the songs, the silence going into it. And then either. I mean, maybe some it was peri some, peripheral vision. Like, yeah, they, yeah. yeah. Well, it was so. It's so funny. I was like, um, we were at disheveled cuss practice. I had this like crazy noise thing going on before the song. And like Chris intentionally, I like there's supposed to be stick clicks, three stick clicks, and then a snare, a snare pop that I think cuts off the noise sample or something. Like mm. I, we had designed it the certain way. And Rob is like, he's like looking down and getting ready to play. And he's like, I, I can't hear the clicks. I can't hear them. I'm like, you got to be looking, dude. Yeah, That's yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. Not, not uh -huh. to Rob is an incredible Rob's done, you know, done his time. Oh with yeah. Like weird shit, <laughs> yeah. obviously. But I'm like, no, no, this specific thing. It's a visual, like you're not mm -hmm. going to hear that. Cause I'm noising out like so yeah. hard. Yeah. The stick clicks are almost just an aesthetic. Yeah. You, you have to kind of look at this thing, yeah. but I do feel like if I take it all the way back, that, that was probably something I learned from you guys about like literally how to enter a mm. song. Sometimes like, I, like Gabe would just like a, Da, 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 yeah, or one. maybe yeah. got got da, or yeah. something you yeah. know but like that, we, that was the thing that came up in rehearsal is it one click or two click or one snare hit or two yeah. is it one or two there's never like i mean there was four hell no it, barely you know, four there was yeah. once there's once on that four <laughs> because we needed it we needed a tempo you know okay, right. uh, it was like a slow song you're like oh we gotta fucking get this slow shit but you know it's funny because we had john reese on here um a few episodes back and 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 for me seeing rocket perform live um, was always such like I out of all of this I love all the stuff he he does. Um, Jay who was my thing. Rocket I love too because um, I would go see Rocket play and it would just be like boom 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 a fucking song after song and it was always a four count and it was very normal. But I was like it was the presentation you know it was like okay we're gonna stop here he's gonna fucking talk some shit and then they're gonna rip back into like a whole bunch of other ones. That's rude. <laughs> What's it telling me? Oh, it's telling me that I was had to move my car so I wouldn't get a parking ticket. 
Okay, just hit it again. No. Cool. So yeah, it was like it, it, there was a four count every time, but it was still an impressive performance. Right. This is all to say to anyone listening, you can get creative with how you enter a song. Mm -hmm. You don't need the four, dude. Yeah, We're telling yeah. you. you. Or don't, if you do need the four, just do it make it like Rocket and just rip fucking hard. Yeah. Or it, there's just ways to do that that are not like click, 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 yeah. click, you know. But yeah, that's that's funny. Um, was the where the did locust? It was only snare hits, at no, least in, towards I mean, the the. That was Gabe's thing. One, yeah, but uh, but I know. can't. Re I'm trying to like. I guess I. That's something I associate with that band is one snare hit. One, yeah, mm -hmm. God, yeah, da, 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 or whatever, yeah. You know, I think um, John Severson did it too. He he might have done like one or two, and they played that's together. Daughters, and, yeah, okay, yeah. They played together in in, in projects and stuff too. And they're very similar, but like it was, I was always a fan of like not having, you don't have it on the record. There's no, four, you know, I don't want <laughs> the four right. count on the record. That's like I, right. want, I want it to like just happen. Well, and again, going back to the practice thing, you, if you, if we play this enough times in the practice mm -hmm. spot, we're going to have it like intrinsically. We're going to yeah. know what the tempo is yeah. to go into it. So like a lot of times Taramelos, we n know nothing literally just like no no we don't need that like it can just be from off coming off of a sample mm -hmm. or some noise thing or whatever but like we don't need we don't need to establish mm -hmm. the tempo ahead of time because we all know it we mm -hmm. played yeah. it 10,000 times and you know again i'm like man i definitely miss that era yeah. of just like practicing that much you know do you practice a lot no i wish i did <laughs> but the locust would have to and that was and it was cool and even john reese was saying like we just practice every day you know or we did practice every day but you know what's funny the 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 four or no clicks or whatever the one thing that has come up to me is like i'm like you guys if we have this body of work um with with one click or no clicks people the audience may not even realize it's another song. And I'm like, that might be <laughs> a concern. Um, right. Same with Planet B, too, because there'll be times where, like, the songs will just kind of go, like, we have them in chunks. And I'm like, I I'm not sure, like, to, like, a normal person out there, they're probably just like, oh, this is the same piece of song. Or, right. You know, whatever. And so I wonder if, like, the four count is the thing to, like, let people know, like, hey, changing songs now. Yeah. The Locust, for sure. You'd be like, this is another Oh, this is the same thing uh, that you just were the same part of the song or whatever. Well, that's funny because, um, that EP, uh, safety second, it's just like that's presented in chunks, but it's basically just 10 minutes. We play it in full. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, cause I remember that it's, it's, it's split up into a couple of tracks or a few tracks on the actual EP or on uh, the CD or whatever. On the CD, it's one, and on the vinyl, it's two because you had to flip the. We 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 could have put it all on one side. I don't know why they wanted to change it, but on the track li listing, it's broken down into four movements. That's what it was. But it yeah. but it but it was it is one thing. We've but, never done like. But was there track IDs on? There were track IDs on it, wasn't there? The CD, I think, is just one, two. The CD two. Is two. It was yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. Which is just we but struggled with that too, because like, it's funny. That was like whoa. The locusts have a long songs now. But they mm -hmm. were. This is all what your idea of what a song is. Sure, and, you know it's a yeah. bigger. It like, never what repeats does that even back mean? to the riff. Yeah. There's no chorus. It's there's like no yeah. Okay, this is. I guess you could call this a long song, but like you're saying, like even with Planet B stuff, like we're not really sure. People might not even know that this isn't the same song. Like, what does it even mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. Because it's just, it's just art. It, it is, <laughs> and know, it's whatever. like whatever. How however you intended it to be presented that way, but like I remember thinking like whatever maybe there was a press release or there was some there was a deal about that ep because it was like whoa there's a long like a couple long yeah. songs yeah but then when you like think about it you're like what does it even mean for yeah. this to be a song because this could be a bunch of little songs yeah. or it could be one long 10 minute thing or whatever you there know? is there is footage of the beginning of that safety second as a song being played at gilman street and it's like it's different and it's just a song and it was just like a, its own song yeah but the reason so like before I think we started recording this, um, we were talking about death grips and how like um, they don't speak to the audience. Right. That I'm a big fan of. I wish I could still do that. But the locust had to do that because we would get it was like becoming a thing to like heckle the locust. And we're like, this is not fun for us. Like because for one, the heckles were about 90 percent dumb and we would just have to fuck people up, you know. Right. Um, 
um, verbally, you know, like we're just going to trash you because you have stupid heckles. And that got really old. So we um, bridged all the music so no one could speak to us. And that was kind of like why Safety Second happened. That because we hated having to have dialogue with people that were typically just being jerks. And also we got billed to play this um, a, a show um, and that we, there was like a 50 minute set time and we're like oh so we got dave stone to play in the band and he did these like noise pieces and it kind of that's what influenced us to write that um i like not talking to people and i like that about death grips but the audience looks at it as like i don't know it's like isolating or like yeah it's like an affront to the audience when you talk to people like because when i sing i don't want to fucking if i'm a singer man i don't want to like i don't really want to like engage hey guys like it's good to see you like or thanks or whatever i mean yes i want to say thanks but I feel like the audience should already know that we're thankful. We're fucking psyched, but they want to have dialogue. They want to right. like have you be personable. Yeah, more of a personal experience. Yeah, I get it, but it's art. <clears throat> like that's why I thought Death Grips was rad. Mm-hmm. Like fucking, they're r- ripping. I don't. They don't need to talk to me. Like yeah, it's funny. I I see it both ways. I guess because I don't want to say. Ways, I don't want to say shit either. Yeah. I don't like. I would rather just play and present this as a piece of art that's not being broken up with. Dur, 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 yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> check out my website or whatever you know yeah. but that's so interesting that that's how that those sound quote unquote soundscapes or whatever but on, on that record which is like one of the most exciting things about that is joey's just modular yeah fucking weirdness on it um and seeing that live was so weird. But yeah. that makes perfect sense where you're like, wow, this would be maybe Dave Stone uh-huh. is when you guys are doing that version of the band. He's doing stuff in between songs yeah. to fill those spaces yeah. or whatever. But it was so nice to go like, oh, we don't have to engage with the audience anymore. <laughs> right. It was such a pleasure. I remember. So um, do you remember the I think do you remember a Sacramento magazine called Rant Magazine? Uh huh. I think you did an interview with them and maybe that's where I'm like calling some of this information from whatever, like 2002 or whatever, sometime right around then. But um, maybe I heard this then, but like I, I only started seeing Locust play when it was the shushing people era. Yeah. And I think the heckle you would, I don't think I ever saw, I don't think I've ever seen you address the crowd verbally yeah. in that band. Yeah. And I think that I was right around the time that you maybe it was like a conscious decision to be like, no, no, we're just shushing people yeah, now. Because it was silence. rude. It was yeah. just saying rude ass shit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So and I never got to see the actual like fucking mm-hmm. with people yeah. era, it, like verbally fucking. It was, with them. it was, of course, yeah. shushing people is like way radder. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's a lot to it, there's a lot of depth. But it's, um, <laughs> The, sh- the, sh- the talking thing was so fucking weird. Um, the last Locust stuff, we re- we pre-recorded like a weird vocal thing to, to play. Like, all right, and then it'll be like this voice. And it was always, we I did it in different this. languages and yes. shit. Like, we're just, I don't want to talk, you know. But like, that's the thing about, too, going back to Rocket, which is like kind of the um, musical opposite, but aesthetic, um, same thing as the Locust, I feel like. Because when I would see them play, it'd be like... Um, they would rip into the first chunk. It would be like song after song after song. They would stop. He'd have dialogue, fucking rip into the song. And it was like, it was like the whole thing was orchestrated. He engaged, but on his own terms. And I've, I've definitely taken uh, a couple notes there because like even in Def Club, it's like, I'm going to just say in these parts of the set, I'm going to talk and I'm going to say this fucking bullshit. And then we're going to not let anybody like get too um, involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is interesting for people listening this right now that maybe haven't considered what we think about as artists and like how we want to address the audience. This is a real thing. Like, you know what I mean? That we like, (laughs) that we're like, man, fuck, I don't want to say anything. Or like, you know, Pixies, like Frank Black doesn't say shit. Like I, you know, he did like it's silence. It's just song after song after song or whatever. And in my head, I'm like, Oh, I wish you'd say hi, yeah. you know, or whatever. <laughs> but I'm like respect though. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, cause we all think about this or the death grips thing. Like they just play fucking, you know, it's 88 minutes of nonstop. Yeah. Like in yeah. your face yeah. or whatever. And like, th- it's all intent. Oh, not always, but a lot of the time, if you, if you, um, I guess, it's more thoughtful 
for some bands to when they like if if you're watching a band and they're not saying anything to you, that's like they're thinking on that. They're yeah. like, man, I don't want to like I don't want to ruin this flow or whatever it is, yeah. you know, like so it's just it's a, a little teeny quirk that I guess some bands have where you're like, no, this is like I know this might not seem like anything to anyone watching this, but to me, this is kind of oddly like a thing yeah i don't like or creating you know. a vibe like i remember seeing diamante glass and it was like what do you expect her to come out and say right like, i don't yeah, want her to no say shit. shit to me i'm like i feel like i just got like you know <laughs> un- like a some kind of possessed th- you know i don't know i was like just let her do her thing like, you know I was- what i used to do actually now i'm remembering this too <laughs> we're like talking about talking to the audience this is such a weird topic <laughs> but it's real i remember um at Terramello shows i would talk off mic if I wanted to say thanks or like, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, address the crowd, I would like kind of like get off the mic. Maybe even we were doing this as an instrumental band, but it's been a long time. Now, now it'd be if I had a mic in front of me, I don't like talking into the mic. Uh-huh. I would talk off the mic, even if it's a big, let's say a, a support tour where we're playing to a thousand people. Something about that is really <laughs> yeah. cool to me. like 40 people will hear kind you. And, of, no and I would else. like, yeah. you know, I'd project my voice and be like, hey, thanks so much. This yeah. band's called Terra Mellis. We really appreciate blah, blah, blah. But like. That that was like an intentional oh. thing because I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this is like a connection. This is mm-hmm. part of how I want to present this of being like, hey, no, I'm being real with you right now. Like I, I, I want to connect with you and literally tell you thank you for coming. And I want you to know that I mean that. And so by getting off the mic and like loudly talking to as many people as oh. I can, maybe you would like – feel me on that a little more than just That's like really cool yeah right. so yeah. that was like an intentional thing we can't hear you get on the mic yeah. i'm like no i'm just i'm trying to like talk to 30 people right now yeah. you know what i mean yeah so yeah even that was like a thing i always yeah. just get my wit up and i'm ready to fuck up, fuck up anybody <laughs> like you know i mean it, and i like that kind of shit keep keep you on your toes there's some people there are there are some people that are that are performers and i'm like oh yeah you guys like know how to do it yeah yeah, it's weird. Like I even think about just kind of going back to well, even just this death grips thing of like someone was asking me the other day about playing to like big audiences. Speaking of like talk, you know, connecting with mm-hmm. people, that's a weird thing because um, those are the biggest shows I've ever played before. Mm-hmm. And maybe my dad was asking me or something about like, oh, how's it feel? Like that's crazy, right? It must be amazing. And. I don't know how you feel about playing big shows, but it is incredible. And it's like, whoa, cool. This is everything I dreamed of. But it's very different. Oh, totally. Coming from the world, this world Uh of like, okay, even if I'm playing the way I was explaining, it was like, even if I'm playing to a room, like a, let's say a, a room of 500 people, I could look out and see in theory i could i could Mm -hmm. see and make a little visual connection with every single person in this room and it feels like we're in this together this is a thing we're experiencing Mm -hmm. together you know and like if i wanted to i could talk i could address every single one of these people whereas once you start going bigger and once you get to three thousand five thousand people that's a very different experience oh yeah and it's like okay there's a front row of people that i can see I can maybe see a little bit behind there. And so maybe, yeah, maybe up to like 500 people. And then beyond that, it's just a fucking seat Mm -hmm. of heads Mm -hmm. of just masses. And then I start to feel like, um, I'm just sort of up here doing my thing. I'm not really like necessarily trying to connect like I would to a room Mm -hmm. of 500 people and make an impact. I'm just almost like a circus Mm -hmm. people watching this thing instead of, I mean, when our bands play, it, it is a circus, right? <laughs> you know, even to smaller, uh-huh. smaller room, 30 people, it's a fucking circus. But it's it's a circus that we're we're all in this together. Mm. And I don't know how to fully articulate it properly. Because, because when when you're playing a festival or a big, a big, a big venue that you're you're how many feet away from the first <laughs> human? Like if you're playing the Casbah tonight. They're in your face and you can share this energy because there is something a shared energy. Yeah. And even though the energy in a fucking five thousand person live nation concrete box is insane and you know can't even imagine what's going on yeah out there it's a lot but it's just so different it's not as personable it's not personable and i i i love it and i think it's really really exciting and fun but i don't i think i prefer 
playing uh, to 25 mm-hmm. engaged people, mm-hmm. even versus 3,000 engaged people, because there's just such a disconnect yeah. at that level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even That's, like the just the furthest person so far away. Like that just sucks. Like just get up here. Yeah, know? and I something about just having grinded this way for so long. You know, it, it it's just weird when you magnify it to that level. And then I think of like like the Foo Fighters mm-hmm. or something like rock band, the biggest rock bands, or like whatever Metallica playing that. You know, to Russia, however, a million people or something like that. Like, what even is that? Yeah. What are the Foo? Are the Foo Fighters having fun? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like how, what is that? That is like a job. That's just, you're, you're going up there doing your job yeah. at that point. And the majority of people are like just looking and they're like, Oh, look at there's Dave yeah. up there playing guitar way up there. It's crazy. You know? uh, like I, yeah. uh, like I, uh, saw Smashing Pumpkins at the Hollywood Bowl last year and I was in like the nosebleeds yeah. and I hadn't like sat that far back in a big crowd like that. I'm like, what even is this? Do they like this? Do I like this? Yeah. This is nothing to me at this point, yeah. you know? And I just think about that again from my perspective of playing these bigger rooms that I've never played before and then thinking about massive, massive rock bands and I'm like, wow, again, going back to like what I – kind of dreamed about as a kid and then being like damn do i want that would i want that i don't know that that would be like that interesting or that fun to do you know it's crazy obviously like Mm -hmm. playing to big crowd i mean dude obviously we'd all love to do that just to see what that experience is but i don't know that that would be fulfilling Mm -hmm. let's say to be in a a massive massive rock band or something yeah financially feeling that's i mean right Mm -hmm. there's but then but then if you're I mean, I don't know how it is to be in Foo Fighters, but like they do their thing, and but they're never gonna be able to play the Casbah and yeah. feel that again. Like right. that's just not gonna happen anymore. You know, I guess. Um, okay. Well, like Rolling Stones played a secret show at Belly Up. Yeah. And I was like, that's crazy. They have to like go through this huge thing, and like, I mean, they're just whatever. It probably cost them money to fucking do that. I I I'm like so 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 out of the Green Day loop for the last 25 years mm-hmm. but i know that they had like a side band i think it was called foxborough hot tubs that they were just playing that they like it was like a their, their side garage rock band this is in like the last decade to where they i think they played gilman like mm-hmm. they to, to go back and play <laughs> yeah like they wanted to do that yeah. i'm like oh that's cool because they're acknowledging like hey this ain't the same we want well, gilman just... won't let you play if you're in a, on a major right exactly yeah. so maybe that was like a loophole well I'm sure those guys, those guys could probably play if they wanted to. I don't know. Well, I think I think that Fox, I think their side band did play Gilman. I think. Yeah. I don't know, but the point. Oh is, yeah, but they're not. But that yeah. band is not on it. Yeah. The point being is like, wow, that's interesting that they're probably acknowledging that. Like, hey, it would be cool to like go back to quote unquote our roots or whatever, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's just it's funny to me again, just like thinking about like acknowledging the journey and just being stoked on this instead of like, well, what am I trying to accomplish here? Like, wow, fuck dude, would I even want to be in like this larger than life? Not that I ever consciously wanted that, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like you want your band to get bigger, sure. you know? And I guess at some point I'm like, mm, I'm pretty comfortable playing to, you know, 10 people to 500 people. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not, not so bad. Maybe the big, the bigger, the bigger picture is like you have most people, you have a lot of people starting bands because they want to be successful. And then you have a lot of people that don't become successful and maybe are like upset or bitter that they didn't get that success. And where you're like, I feel I'm happy. Right. You know? I feel the same way. Like, yeah, things yeah are be you better. happy? I mean, I'm unhappy with things that don't have to do with like monetary stuff. But the, the struggle, the hustle to, like, pay the bills sucks. But I'm unhappy with things like um, our gear sucks or our van keeps breaking down. Right. <laughs> and, like, those are the things that, like, I'm like, this fucking sucks. Like, our van broke down again. You yeah. Know? Um, but, but, like, am I happy? Yeah. Like, I'm in a – I have not compromised. I do – I create art that I think we all love. Like, we, we're not, like, doing it, like – what's the successful, um, you know, formula. Comp- formula, let's do that. And like, not have it be from our heart. I think when you do it it's, and it's not from your heart, then, then you're probably gonna be unhappy. Right. <laughs> right. Like at the end of the day, like, yeah, I would love to have the financial income, but at the end of the day, like I created something that I can say I completely love and I put my entire essence into it. I didn't do it for, success or because this is what the industry is looking for. I agree. 
and it probably the same thing with me the things that like you know bum me out are logistical things yeah mm-hmm. or the, like and i think even like i said the practicing thing like oh man or yeah. the, the van or like oh shit this is expensive or whatever but yeah you're right uh, other than that i'm like actually i'm good i'm pretty satisfied mm-hmm. with like what my world is and this is cool i'm happy about this and like great you yeah. know this works for me i'm also aware that like there's a million bands out there. There's, there's. I heard there was two hundred thousand new songs a day released on Spotify. <laughs> I don't really listen to Spotify, but two hundred thousand. So you're thinking like that's probably two hundred thousand bands that like, I don't know. May, I mean, people people care about the stuff we do to an extent, but people could really not give a fuck about what you do. Uh, do well, you need those like perception reality checks every once in mm-hmm. a while because when I'm down on something, I'm like. Even I've I've even thought about like making a disheveled cuss record. I have like a record ready to go make. I'm like, I think I'm almost on this thing where I'm like, I'd almost be down to like go make a record and just send it to my friends. Just yeah. on like a selfish level of being like, man, I don't want to like deal with the disappointment of, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm kind of into the idea of consciously making a lost record that never mm-hmm. get, like a smile uh, or whatever that never gets released and like that's kind of funny and like dickish you know what i mean like no i'm and or like i'm almost like also the only way to hear my record is to like come in my car and like we oh, yeah. go to, go to lunch and i'll <laughs> yeah. show it to you in my car or yeah. something that's how i want to release my record yeah. that's so but cool. but then i'm like just get yeah. them to buy you lunch, and then you have lunches bought for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and then I recoup through lunch. Only um, four people can hear this at a time. Yeah, but but then it's like, oh, reality check. No, there are people. There's there's some people that really like this, and it's not what I was hoping for. But like, nah, that's good. Yeah. Like even if it's a, a small, relatively speaking, or whatever, you know. If there's a hundred people, a thousand people that like this, well, that's really, really good. Yeah. And it could be a lot worse than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not bad. Like a thousand people. If at this point I've like, I can count on a thousand people wanting to hear my record. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Like that's still yeah. mind blowing, you know? And, and I people like, look at that as like only a thousand. Y- yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Especially if we're talking like, monthly listeners or whatever yeah. which i don't mm-hmm. i don't know yeah. about any of that stuff you could rattle off numbers to me and i we don't got know seven yeah exactly right? i'm like <laughs> now now if it was seven people i'd be like respect to you seven people that yeah. like this mm-hmm. i think i'm only going to release this to my friends uh-huh. you know mm-hmm. in my in my car for lunch or whatever but but one of those i think that stopped recording one of those seven um one of those seven people could change the world because of your record Totally. And so it makes it, so that makes it like worth it. I mean, uh, again, like I said, a thousand people being wanting to hear a record is fucking cool. Dude, seven people wanting to hear a record. That's seven people that are like, yeah, I fuck with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, that's cool. Right yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Let's wrap it because yeah. everything's turning off and it's it's been a minute. But, yeah. Um, Let's say a shout out. <laughs> there you go. We're, we're wrapping done. it. Where's the fucking yeah. duct tape when you? <laughs> um, uh, is this still working? Let's just say thanks to those um, seven people. Fucking whatever. That's rad. I, I don't know. I'm so down for seven people. I'm down for a thousand people. I'm yeah. not trying to trash a room of five thousand people. Don't get me wrong. Sure. I'm mm-hmm. just like it's different. Yeah. You know this is this whole thing that we do. It's a a bizarre lifestyle it and it's a, a crazy adventure and like you know i mean we're lifers right <laughs> that's it yeah. this is what we do so yeah, yeah seven people 700 people whatever i'm down let's make yeah. it let's make a deal if if either of us get a mcdonald's commercial or a tesla commercial let's just um hook each other up Handshake. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for yeah, having me. Yeah, I'm psyched, yeah. man. Thanks. Thanks. So there you have it. Episode 38 of the Colton Culture Podcast. Nick Reinhardt. Um, really hope you enjoyed that one. That one was a really good one. I like I said previously, I love the flow of that conversation. It just took off and. Um, yeah, so we would like to thank 
everybody. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Andy, Becky, Earthquaker, Heartwork, uh, Fender, uh, you. Ruinous Media. Ruinous, of course. Forgetting a bunch Jeff of shit. Jeff Bezos. Oh, wait, not Jeff Bezos. Fuck. Um, anyhow, yeah. we'd like to thank you, the listener or viewer, um, and we hope you check out other podcasts, wherever mm-hmm. you stream those. And, uh, yeah, subscribe, like, and all that stuff. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Colton Culture is proudly sponsored by Earthquaker Devices, Fender, and Heartwork Coffee. Planet Planet B. B.